Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 525 of the Agostino Zynga Show. I hope you're doing well, wherever you may be. Thanks so much again for tuning in to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 525 with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. If that was not clear already, thank you so much for joining the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 525 with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you are well, wherever you may be. I'm doing the best that I can be at the time available, and I hope you're doing the same. If it's your first time watching a show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below with your thoughts, feelings, suggestions. If you listen via the podcast app, a 54321 star review will really help the show. So if you can do that and leave me a little review, it doesn't have to be much. One word, thumbs up, emoji, ha ha ha, XOXO, SMH, LMAO, whatever it may be please do so i'll be greatly greatly appreciated and if you want to support the podcast via patreon too and get access to all my patreon bonus content as well as one bonus show per week and a live stream recorded only for my patreon subscribers at the end of the month please join the patreon at patreon.com for just agostino i've already had a couple of new patrons jump in the last couple of days trickling in little by little we might hit our target of 20 backers by the end of the year which will be an incredible feat considering i was on like 10 for the majority of this year so if i get up to 20 i'll be so happy so if you can do so jump on the patreon it's only one dollar the equivalent of one pound per month you get access to all my bonus content of course only on patreon.com for shows agostino sometimes some clips of it are available on other parts but mostly i keep all that patreon content only on patreon so if you want that extra bonus content then please jump on patreon.com for just agostino you can find the link in the description of wherever you're listening or watching this you can find it right in the description patreon.com for just agostino support the show support the mother show but yeah here we are back again hope you're good wherever you may be i'm feeling good i'm feeling great weekend is up and coming um got many things planned probably gonna go clubbing probably gonna watch the ufc probably going to be a doing, doing a bit of live stream DJing stuff. So that should be fun to do and all that stuff in between. So I'm really looking forward to kind of, you know, expressing myself this weekend and showing, showing myself to be the best person that I can be. Right now, I'm trying to be the best person I can be over the weekend. Is that possible? Probably not. Weekends aren't really meant for self-actualization, are they? They're probably meant for debauchery and um, hedonism. So the fact that I'm trying to do that is something that is quite unexpected. But hey, I am who I am. I am who I am. But yeah, man, we're back again and we're living our best life. Uh, many things have happened during the week, so I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to not waste any of your precious God forgives, God forgiven or God forsaken time. We're going to go straight into it, it. So I spoke the other day on the podcast about my kind of, um, what would you say? Me trying to play devil's advocate in the case of Juicy Smollett and basically saying, what if he's telling the truth? And I don't mean it like I believed him. I meant it more so... He's been, you know, from whatever evidence we have available at the moment, it kind of seems more likely than not he was probably chatting shit about the whole attack, right? The whole hate crime attack. It's most likely that he was lying. But for whatever reason, despite the mounting evidence, despite his career being complete tatters, because you have to remember, he's an actor, he's an entertainer. He's basically been sitting on the sidelines for two years. I'm sure COVID hasn't helped things, but essentially he's kind of excommunicated himself or made himself kind of persona non grata by maintaining this lie this entire time he's not actually he's not relented at all he just even in the hopes of trying to rescue his career and he's been adamant that this attack happened so i was thinking to myself you know what maybe in his head he genuinely believes that it did happen where he said it happened because he didn't know it was those two nigerian brothers that attacked him he generally assumed that it was the MAGA supporters but obviously as the case has now concluded and the guilty verdict was read out as I, oh, I didn't mention at the start joseph smollett has been found guilty i think of five of the six charges so basically what's been shown here is that the jury has seen with the evidence provided to them that more likely than not, he did um, plan or the whole attack was a hoax. Well, th no, th they basically concluded that the attack was a hoax, not that he planned it. Yes, if you attack a hoax, you have to plan it. But whatever, you get what I mean, right? And I'm still left here scratching my head as to why he decided to do such a thing. No, not give me why. Why is not good? Why is not a good point to come at this? I get the why. Most of us wouldn't because we're not narcissists. And we're not, you know, maybe um, self-interested psychopaths, whatever it may be. But I guess if you're an entertainer, if you're an actor of some sort, you've gone to drama school, you've grown up an incredibly privileged, you know, uh, black kid in Chicago, wherever he grew up in, in, in the States, right? 
obviously he has his roots in the South or whatever. I think some family in the South, but for the most part, he grew up in a very kind of affluent family, went to boarding school or private school, sorry. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming he had the access to all the best people in terms of getting his career in the, you know, acting and entertainment world. Um, his family, friends with Kim Fox, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of kind of political sway, a lot of influence, a lot of prestige, blah, 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 associated with his name. So I could understand in some way, shape or form, doing the thing that he did in terms of lying because he probably hasn't said he probably hasn't heard a no in his life many times it probably hasn't been a door that he hasn't been able to open via himself or through other people that he might have known so i can understand the need to kind of add a few more kind of uh prestige points to his name or to his image by kind of you know saying he was the victim or he was he survived a, a pretty brazen hate crime right in the middle of chicago i get it but the thing i never understood was that once it was obviously shown that more likely than not it was a hoax and most people believe that you probably did lie and the fact that again just in terms of self-interest forget all the lying stuff just saying in terms of self-interest you basically been on the sidelines for two and a half years he hasn't been able to do award shows no radio no radio interviews no press um no media like on tv or whatever it may be um obviously knows acting nothing for the last two and a half years he's been on the sidelines and someone like him even if he's got money what, gets, what makes him get up in the morning isn't the fact that he's making money. It's the fact that he's been able to get the adoration of fans who like his singing, who like his acting. So for that not to be happening and for basically you to, for doing it to yourself, because I think if you would have just said, hey, I fess up to it, hold my hands up, people would have been probably more likely to move on given his background, given his race, given his sexuality. I'm sure he would have been given a bit of a bligh. But he just didn't do that. He refused to do that. There was no real inkling from his camp whatsoever that he was ever going to come out and say, okay, hold my hands up, I lied. Right, let's move on. I just don't get it. I really don't. But I think someone said, or I saw someone on social media say something along the lines of, um, what did they say? Uh, oh, yeah, that someone made a point I saw on social media. Like, maybe he's actually, maybe he's a narcissist to the level where he's actually enjoying this attention. Even though this outcome isn't desirable, most likely he's going to appeal. I think that's what um, his lawyer did say in the press conference after. Um, obviously, just to limit. Jesse Smollett, Jesse Smollett, Jesse Smollett made no comment, you know, just rushed straight to his car. There's a video I'm going to play later of his mom, who's elderly, being assisted by two other ladies, you know, slowly and surely walking out the courtroom, thinking to myself like, guy, man, you're putting your elderly mom through this. She, like, again, not, not to disparage the lady, but if you're having to walk like that, you're probably not in great health, right? The pressure time that she has available, you probably, she probably shouldn't be holding the into the flipping courthouse to, you know, sit for a trial and go through all that issue in detail. Your family probably don't need to do that either, considering the where we are in the world right now. They probably need to be focusing on other things. It's all just revolved around him. He is the center of the of of the of everything that's going on in the family. Maybe that's how it's always been, even when he was growing up. Maybe he's always been the center of attention. He's always been kind of the theater kid, the one trying to get everyone's attention, performing in a living room sort of thing, right? Um well, wanting all the attention in that regard. So maybe that is a that is kind of a common theme and they don't see anything wrong with it. But I thought that was a little bit icky. But yeah, man, we should we see no relent no, nothing from him relenting from the story, no backtracking, no nothing. He's still adamant that it happened. He's still adamant that the police didn't do their job properly. And he's still adamant that he's going to come out of this somehow smelling like roses. Because even if he does become successful in the appeal and he gets some of the charges dropped, or he's not he's, he's found not guilty of some of the charges, the core public opinion has already spoken, especially at this point. You've gone through an entire, you know, public trial, <clears throat> public ordeal. To try and wait, wait. The first one got thrown out by the courts because of the favours that he has in the political circuit and the influence and whatnot, right? Dismissed. Um, then he got out in front of the camera again. When the charges got dismissed the first time around, he went in front of the camera and gave a speech. Now that he's been found guilty, he had nothing to say to the cameras. Zero. He let his uh, representation and talked for him. Um, and now he's planning to do an appeal to society. The worst type of person, isn't it? There really is the worst type of person. But let's continue. This article quickly says it. it says here, a Smollett actor found guilty of lying about a hoax. Um, or it says here, duh, 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 bear with me. If I zoom in here. Yeah. At a trial this week, Smollett 39 stood by denials um, that he staged a hoax attack against him. Prosecutors countered that by said he lied for hours on the stand as he repeated that he told what he told the Chicago police. He was found guilty on Thursday of five counts of disorderly contact. Each count carries a penalty of up to three years in prison. Given Smollett's lack of previous convictions, uh, experts have said a lighter sentence or probation is likely. A sentencing date is yet to be scheduled. So um, I heard that a lot being repeated by the prosecution, that they were really pissed off that he just kept lying. 
I guess in some respects they just assumed because the, it had gone so far and because the evidence was so damning that he probably did hoax it, he's going to suddenly kind of you know put his hands up and say, nah. I would assume that because, I, like I said before in the previous podcast, I'm a person who maybe I might lie about something or I might lie about a story or I might lie about an event or I might lie about a detail about, about my life. But there comes a point where if someone keeps asking me questions about it, I'm just not going to be bothered to try and keep up the lie. I'm going to be like, you know what? I was chatting shit, my bad. I lied about that, right? Like when kind of pushed in the corner or what, not, when kind of pushed to explain more um, or to give more details, I'm going to be like, you know what? I, I'm not really, I don't really care that much. So I, I'm going to admit it now, I lied. It was just me on something else. But I think some people don't have that in them. Some people, well, the more you start pushing them and probing them and pressing them on the questions, they start, if anything, they start kind of doubling down and they lie. Or maybe questioning your sanity or accusing you of whatever, homophobia, racism, whatever, just to kind of deflect away from the point that, you know, they're lying, that kind of, so maybe he's one of those people. The jury of six men and six women reached a decision one day after the deliberations began, so it didn't take long for them to come to a conclusion. The trial stemmed from an incident nearly three years ago in January 2019 when a former Empire Television star told police he was a victim of a hate crime. Smollett, who is black and gay, told police that he was set up on by the assailants who uh, shouted slurs, yelled at Trump slogans, dumped um, chemical substances on him and tied a noose around his neck while he was walking late at night in Chicago. You know what's interesting? I thought about this too, right? This might be one of the most damning parts of the Trump leg no, the Trump presidency, in some respects. Because I still do think most countries or most nations, you you do end up getting the political you do end up getting the political leadership you deserve. Whether it's through um, you know, uh, ambivalence to politics, uh, disenfranchised youth. Um, whatever it may be, right? You, un I do think you honestly do get leaders that you deserve. So I have no doubt in my mind that Trump was the perfect person to lead that country at that time. To either bring them together or splinter them more than they needed to be splintered because they're already heading that way anyway. But one of the other things I think about his presidency that is really long lasting has been all the kind of, um, has been all the kind of uh, what do you call them? Has been, has been everyone on the on his outside of his orbit who's been who's been kind of negatively affected or positively affected by his presidency right some people made entire careers off him like alec baldwin for instance basically came back into the public conversation because of his crappy impersonations of trump on snl and obviously now he's going through what he's going through um then you've got obviously the rioters at the capitol hill building right some of those guys are going to prison i think there's a lady going to prison i think in january um you know most of their lives have been fucking ruined by that whole entire episode then of course you have Jussie Smollett, who basically, you know, off the back of the Trump presidency, tried to stoke the fires again of, you know, uh, red hatred and what not going on, and try to kind of, you know, use that to lean into to kind of use to kind of propel his career. People have really, people really lost their minds over Trump being president, and I really don't get it. I understand he was a, he wasn't the most, um, what do you call it? He didn't inspire a lot of confidence when it comes to great leadership in that regard, right? I guess it depends how you look at it. But in terms of what you expect a president to kind of act like and be like, right? You don't expect a president to just only represent one half of the population, right? Even if they, you know, that's how basically most people vote. It's usually a split near on 50-50. Okay, cool. But still, you need to unite the country once you do come into power, right? It's all about poking holes and insulting and maybe denigrating the other side but once you then get into the white house your job is to kind of let's bring everyone together and let's try and have some common ground so we can work together for a better future for our family children blah 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 he did none of that and again don't get me wrong i understand why he didn't because if if we're being honest he also wasn't given any room to try and be a good guy he immediately was painted as a devil as basically hitler reincarnated right like he never was given a chance to kind of try to redeem himself or to try and be a good person um i also think they, they did this thing where they didn't i don't know if this is a fair again speaking from the outside in i feel like americans didn't really or some of the people in the media mostly they didn't really even try and appeal to his to his kind of better nature where i think he kind of just he's one of those people that loves compliments so if, if he would have done something that was kind of um, to the benefit of people on the left, they should have just kind of praised him for it over overtly so that he knew that good behavior would be somehow rewarded outwardly by people that openly mocked him beforehand. So he could just kind of get more of it. And they didn't do that. Everything he did was never good enough. It was always wrong. Um, there was always some ulterior motive, some sinister motive. And in the end, he just doubled down on the hatred. He doubled down on the dog whistling. He doubled down on appealing to his base. 
And again, like I said, it's affected people in the positive. So some people have made entire careers off of it. I'm pretty sure Tim Paul's YouTube career, it, it, it blossomed greatly during uh, Trump's presidency. Other people's YouTube careers completely stagnated. I think Dave Rubin can kind of been saying same sort of thing, right? His career kind of went a bit flatlined. Um, he got a bit too close to the sun when it comes to Trump. Um, but yeah, it's it's just an interesting thing to analyze from afar. Justice Smollett essentially, you know, fucked up his entire career because he hated Orange Man bad so much. It's like, in the end, he's the one coming out of it looking like an absolute donut, right? But let's um. Quickly go on this Twitter account from this guy who's been covering the entire thing, Matt Finn, who I've been obviously posting a lot on here on the show. Um, please make sure you follow him. He's been doing some great journalistic work. I also love the fact that he hasn't been inserting his own opinions into it. He's just been stating the facts and kind of offering both sides of the argument and just basically allowing you to make your own decision as to what you think um, might have happened. Kind of reminds you what kind of journalism should be like, what media should be like, all those kind of things going forward. But, you know, again, okay, let's continue. Um... So you've got a picture here, a video, sorry, of Smollett walking into his verdict. I love how all these images of Smollett walking around places. He's always kind of flanked by an army of black people. I'm assuming who are very influential people in Chicago. I, I think so. Maybe there's a couple of white guys here and there. But for the most part, it looks like a co... It looks like a, um, a purposeful uh, thing to do, to kind of have yourself flanked by all these strong, powerful black people in your city um as a mark to show that you know i've got the right people alongside me so if they're alongside me for sure i'm telling the truth but it seems like all that has had no influence no one's really dug into who the people are around him i've not seen him on many shows like breakfast club and stuff you know talking about his innocence there's none been none of that it's just been there's kind of been a little bit of a it feels like in a black in a black community in the u.s it's kind of been like a it's kind of been like a little bit of a oh we're gonna pretend that's not happening we're going to pretend that guy didn't just try and fool us, didn't just try and weaponize our race as a way to kind of propel his career. It feels that way, in my opinion. But again, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Um, Smollett, of course, found guilty here, it says on the, on the tweet. He said, um, um, and again, this is an interesting part of it. When the verdict did get re read out, um, he says, yeah, Smollett was quiet, stoic during the verdict, according to my producer in the courtroom. So he didn't move, didn't say nothing, um, pretty much accepted it for what it was. Um, obviously, maybe because he knew he was going to appeal anyway, regardless. So that might have been part of it. Maybe even they agreed. Maybe there was it was partly agreed in a way of like, because it wouldn't surprise me, he's that much of a narcissist, that even if he was found only guilty of three of the six charges, he probably still would appeal the last three, just so he can clear his name 100% sort of thing. Um, continue on, it says, Prosecutor Cook County needed a trial. Whether we won or lost, this needed to be aired out. Definitely agree with that one. Not going to make comments about Kim Foxy, says here, some other charges, uh, but said what happened in the past speaks for itself. Oh, yeah, this is a thing. A prosecutor said at the end, which I thought was really telling as well, because um, I think were, uh, he was asked about what do you think made the jury convinced that this um, whole thing was most likely a hoax? And the prosecutor said the following. Two things stuck out. One, ridiculous to think that he left to buy eggs at 2 a.m. and end up in an intersection where the brothers were, said they were going to be. Um, obviously, which, which kind of shows that there was some sort of plan in place for them to meet at that intersection. And whatever he had said was the plan in terms of going to the gym, that wasn't detailed in the text messages. It was more so about being on the low and doing all this sort of stuff that he tried to say was Nigerian supplements or something. It's like, ay, ay, ay. And then two, he said um, a simple thing. He jimmied the rope to make the noose look closer to the neck. Picks show the differences. And I think we all said this before when the body cam footage got leaked or got released to the press that showed the police officer going up to Justice Smollett's apartment or hotel, wherever he was staying in Chicago. And he was like sh kind of shaking and obviously, you know, um, reciting what happened in his head. And I think Lee Daniels or someone was also in a room and he still had a noose on his neck. And everyone was like thinking like, why are you still have got a noose on your neck? If you went through this horrible ordeal, why is a noose like placed on your neck like some sort of flipping chic scarf that like a Parisian hipster would be wearing? Why don't you just take it off? Um, and obviously, I think he said later on that a friend told him, I forgot, maybe it was Lee Daniels, whoever he called, had told him to put it back on so that they could see what happened. It was like, what? Like, yeah, this makes no sense. Whatever, you continue. Prosecutors not only did um, Smollett lie to the police, wreak havoc on the city, but he compounded a lie by lying to a jury. Um, again, which I think is unfair. It's, uh, it's unlikely he was going to come up in a courtroom and then suddenly say, I admit to my mistakes, I fucking lied. And it's not going to happen. If he didn't do it by now, he's not going to do it later on. Osundari brother's attorney said, Mrs. Smollett, you will still have my mother's child. So, uh, so Os Osundari brother's attorney said, Mrs. Smollett, you are still your mother's child. Humans will forgive. Come clean personally. I forgive you. Wow. Okay. 
Um, the other one, the other Olsen Dario says, I want to wish my brother good luck in his next fight in boxing and Nigerian, Afri Nigerian American lives matter. I don't know what that means. Um, all right, stand by small. It still has to exit the courtroom, requiring is basically to walk in front of the cameras. Of course, embarrassing. You got, of course, here a video of Smollett's elderly mother being escorted out of the courtroom by, I guess, two family relatives or two friends. Clearly looking, you know, I guess some somewhat frail or just, you know, older lady, isn't it? It's just like, how would you put your mum through something like this, man? Re imagine. And that's the thing is all that's been shameless about it, too. It hasn't been the fact that he's just been able... It's one thing dealing with the consequences of your actions as a man on your own and standing up on it and being like, you know what? I messed up, man. I'm going to face this in court. I'm going to face the attorneys. I'm going to face it. But whatever, you're going to stand up and own your thing. Don't then pull in your wife that's got nothing to do with this. Your, your, your brothers, your sisters, your whatever. Not, not in his case, wife. But you know what I mean? Like, Don't pull in other people around you to try and support you and prop you up. No, you got yourself into position in this mess. Now you sort it out yourself. Be a man and do it on your own. Stand on your two feet and, you know, go up there and whatever. But he's using all these people around him to make it seem as if, oh, if they're around me, then that means... What I'm saying is true and it wasn't a lie. It wasn't a hoax. It's like, uh, yeah. But again, he has to face people at home himself. So, you know, maybe they have an understanding. Um, Smollett's attorney says the following. We respect the jury's process. We are very disappointed. Respectfully disagree. Inconsistent. I can't say lying about the same or something about the same. So we feel confident about the appeal, which is crazy, to be honest. Um, unless they legitimately think they have a chance to get some of the charges dropped or unless they're able to prove that it was a prejudice trial to begin with, the jury's mind was already made up because of all the media coverage from the last two years. It was impossible to ignore things. Um, unless they can go, unless they can find some sort of loophole or some sort of administrative error that was made. But I doubt it too, because again, the Chicago police department were embarrassed, right? They felt as if like they were used. Um, they were, they were kind of played. So they went to get back on him. So I'm sure they dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's and made sure this case was watertight before it got brought um, to trial again. So it's very unlikely they're going to be able to find those loopholes. But, you know, I guess if you're an attorney, you've got to try. Um, it says it continues here. Uh, there's a video, obviously, of Smollett leaving a court home. No comment from him. Rushes straight into his car. Completely different from how it was the first time around when the charges got dropped. Just, you know, an incredible, incredible, incredible person, man. And again, a picture of him there, finally a sketch from him in the courthouse looking stoic, looking down, not really making any movement or anything going forward. But like I said, man, um, it's probably going to be a long road for him redemption wise. I'm not sure how you come back from this lying to this regard, especially without any room to be honest and say, hey, I made a mistake. I messed up and just kind of being able to move on that way. Um, it, the hubris in him is just shockingly bad. But again, like I said, I'm really curious. I'd love to sit down with a guy and just kind of find out why he kind of threw away a pretty decent if not me not average but a pretty decent career don't get me wrong he wasn't a list he was maybe c b list celebrity but he had a pretty good um role in that show he was doing was it on M was it empire right that show right um he was obviously coming up a little bit i remember seeing my breakfast interview breakfast club interview of him um he was obviously doing a singing thing which wasn't the greatest but he was trying in that regard um he was actually trying to kind of you know a little bit multidisciplinary in that regard i'm sure he would have got other roles come up because again because of his race because of his sexuality um because of just how he is charismatic in front of the camera his sister's obviously clearly a talented actress too so there's clearly that kind of um trait or talent in terms of being able to be um good at acting good at entertaining just being an all-round creative that definitely would have been something he'd be able to tapped into so why throw that away under the illusion that he could maybe grasp and jump onto um, category B or category A kind of celebrity tier, which he was never really going to get if you're that kind of person, right? You're if you if you're on those kind of shows that power and stuff, like you're never going to become Leonardo DiCaprio. It's not going to happen. You're on those shows because of the level of actor you are, but you then also get to make a pretty decent career, right? You get to work consistently. Um, you have a dedicated fan base that love everything that you do. Like it's not that bad of a life. I don't see why you'd throw that away in the hope of trying to get that little. In, in hope of trying to see the in hope of the grass is always green on the other side but you're not going to get over the other side because it's a very small pool of people who are occupying on those kind of places so it's like i don't know man i don't know and in the, in the protest he kind of turns off everybody that again he, t he he loses fans his own fans that love him and he also turns off people that didn't really care about him in the first place so it's like you lose lose in it but you know what can you do people lie people lie um let's go here oh yeah let's move on this one of course most of you are aware, most of you know now. Let's go. Is it this one, this article? Let's do this one. Most of you are aware, most of you know now. 
that over the weekend a really startling video got leaked basically showing um or basically reminding most people in the uk that the government doesn't really give a shit about how we are treated when it comes to covid and when it comes to lockdowns um they kind of jokingly joked about you know holding christmas parties at number 10 and just basically having no real care as to how it could be perceived that they have lockdowns for the public and wider public overall but then behind closed doors these guys are doing anything that they want and um, in terms of living their lives and goes back to what everyone basically has said about this government where it's just kind of you know rules for i not for d or well, rules for d not for i whatever right um and this video got leaked and a, a little clip from itv news pretty damning most people have basically seen it i'm just going to play it again because obviously i haven't covered it in this podcast and then we're going to move on to why i don't really care to begin with but why it's also incredibly incredibly annoying they literally look as if they are laughing at us you me all of us remember last christmas london was in tier three or indoor gatherings banned lives we were told could be at stake the whole country about to go into lockdown christmas all but cancelled mm -hmm. meanwhile downing street staff were rehearsing their new press secretary for the planned televised press conferences one asked a bit of a jokey question about a party allegedly held four nights before I have to assume reports from Twitter that there was a Downing Street Christmas party on Friday night. Do you recognise it? <laughs> Would the Prime Minister condone a Happy Christmas? What's the answer? I don't know. I didn't want to pass it with cheese and wine. Okay, I'm not. Is cheese and wine alright? No. Was a business meeting. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is recorded. This fictional party was a business meeting. And it was not socially distant. Well, one thing is for sure, not many people are going to be laughing tonight. After days of denials and obfuscations about the party, this is an absolute car crash for the government's reputation. Paul has our exclusive story, but we have reaction too. From those for whom last Christmas was a time of sacrifice. My dad only met his youngest granddaughter once, and to know that there were people who were having cheese and wine nibbles and laughing about it, it's just... To be fair, if you if you uh, listen to the government and allow them to dictate when your granddad could see your flipping, when your granddad could see his grandson, that says more about you and it says about the government, isn't it? Because at that point, you just got to be like, fuck the government. I'm going to take my own precautions. Um, I've got enough information to make a reasoned kind of adult decision for the safety of my family and whatnot and my baby i'm just gonna go have my kid visit his granddad yeah you know i mean even if that means your granddad stays with you for a week or whatnot whatever it may be you'd figure it out you have to wait for the government to say you're allowed to see your mom ah it's like no, no 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 that's not how life works but you know i get the whole point but again of course incredibly embarrassing of course uh, reputation damage but not really in it when it comes to the Tories not really when it comes to politicians in general they don't really suffer reputational damage or maybe the Tories specifically they don't they seem to have this ability to just like they do everything no they seem to have the ability to kind of fuck up fumble never offer their resignation never say hey I messed up I've lost public confidence I'm going to move on to something else I'm going to go to another department and kind of keep myself out of public eye if anything they double down and make themselves even more visible Dominic Cummings being a good example of it you know prior to obviously him get in a boot but they don't seem to have the ability to have there's no sense of shame that's the thing there's no shame but i guess it's a wider problem in the world i've, I've already spoke about it on a podcast beforehand with the whole like you know um yoon ambush copying the bottega veneta boots there's another brand too out at the moment called i think because like is it called empire that I, I read recently i saw online is it empire no, it's called entire studios right and it's this brand that's essentially copied the entire aesthetic of yeezy um you know Kanye west's fashion line and just basically made it into different colors and shapes and stuff it's just the same stuff the billowing proportions the tight leggings and shit the vest the bomber jackets it's the same thing it just changed the colors it's like don't you have any shame so maybe it's a wider society issue but let's just go back to why i don't really care i don't necessarily care what they do behind closed doors mostly if what they do behind closed doors is also what we're allowed to do in front of public right or, or what we're allowed to do as a public so if they have rules for themselves, just have those rules reflective of our people. But let's take a look back or a little walk down memory lane at how bad lockdown was last year or the lockdowns in general, right? So this is a little timeline that I found online kind of detailing the extent of the lockdowns, right? So whilst these guys are chin chinning themselves over rosé and whatnot, right? And enjoying and having an absolute whale of a time, here's what we had to go through. Where can I, I think it's this one. 
right? Uh, yeah, so, ba, 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 ba. yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this is one. So, let's see if 14th of October, right? Announcement. Um, a new tier three system of COVID-19 restrictions starts in um, uh, in England. The 31st of October, the PM announces a second lockdown in England to prevent a medical and moral <laughs> disaster for the NHS. He's talking about medical and moral disaster. Isn't it a moral disaster that you guys are sharing flipping crackers behind closed doors and we can't, you know, go and hug our grandparents and stuff? Like, honestly, these people. 2nd December of 2021. It says... um. Yeah, no, 2nd December, sorry, 2020, my bad. Um, a second lockdown ends after four weeks and England returns to a stricter tier three system of restrictions. 15th of December, the PM says Christmas rules will still be relaxed, but urges the public to keep celebrations short and small. And then four days later, right, he does a complete U-turn and says, um, announces tougher restrictions on London and England, says stay at home alert and Christmas mixing rules tighten. On the 21st, tier four restrictions are coming to force in England, which is obviously the most miserable time. And in the 26th of December, some areas in England enter tier four restrictions. If I remember correctly, around that time, I went back to see my parents and I had to walk back home. I had to walk home and walk back. No, I had to walk there and walk back home, basically. But there's no transport. Obviously, I didn't want to spend money on an Uber and shit. I was just like, God damn it. It was absolute barren wasteland. It was when, you know, that time people were going to central London and taking pictures of like, you know, the center with like nobody around. It looked like something out of a flipping zombie ap apocalypse movie. Absolutely heinous. So that's the issue that I have with it. I don't really have an issue with them celebrating, having a good time. You know, just because they're politician doesn't mean they can't party or rave or take bumps or whatnot. I don't really give a shit. But it's just a blatant. Um, disregard for how this could be perceived by the public for what they're going through in general you know day to day and the just the lack of kind of that's also as well let's just say let's say for for certain that is also a clear indication that they don't necessarily think these measures do anything anyway they don't actually work because if you actually believed lockdowns tier three t4 restrictions mask mandates mandatory vaccination if you thought all those things actually worked you, your action would prove as much, right? You'd be like these kind of crazy people who don't leave their house or wear gloves when they go to the supermarket, right? You'd be one of those people. Your action would prove they take the virus very seriously. But if you're going out all the time and you're raving and you're taking bumps off people and you're fucking loads of random strangers, I can't then take your kind of um, rah rah talk about the vaccine or about the COVID or about wearing masks seriously because you're not living your reps. And that's the same thing the government did. They weren't living their reps. They were going out here telling us that the the COVID was the, you know, was the flipping bubonic plague and that if we didn't stay indoors and we didn't wear our masks, that people were going to be dropping dead on buses and shit left, right and centre. When in reality, the, the, the death rates are incredibly low considering the amount of people that we have in this fucking planet. Um, the cases obviously do not kind of equate to deaths in general, in my opinion. They don't, they shouldn't, but again, we use them in that regard. I understand the toil or the pressure being put on some hospitals or some medical facilities around the country, but let's not also kid ourselves. There are plenty of compilations of nurses and doctors all around the world doing TikTok dances in hospitals, bored out of their nuts, trying to kind of relax and enjoy themselves, which obviously isn't a good sign that the hospitals are clearly oversubscribed. I know some are, but let's not, let's not say all are. And maybe there are better ways to deal with COVID at the moment than just going straight to the vaccine route. Maybe there are other options to do. That doesn't mean you have to be non-vaccinated. Non but there are different things that we have available, different medical protocols that we've learned over the time that you would imagine would um, kind of halt the amount of deaths that we were seeing last year or the year before that. And you could definitely see it in the numbers. The death rates in general have kind of plateaued, not really a lot, but kind of plateaued a little bit. So that clearly shows that we're kind of learning from our past sort of um, go around when it comes to COVID. But for whatever reason, when it comes to dealing with it as a public health issue, the flipping approaches are always the same. It's the same boring shit again and again and again. Nothing changes. And then we hope for different results. Again, going back to that famous Einstein quote. It's just nonsense. It really is a nonsense. Um, and I just don't see how this is going to help because even if you're pro lockdowns and you're pro vaccine, this has severely undermined the government's authority, right? How are they then going to turn around and tell us that we're going to have to live under lockdown in the next plan C or whatever going forward? People are not going to listen. So that's why I don't get understand these politicians. They always make a rod for their own back. Like, why would you be so insistent on these mandates or these rules or these restrictions or these kind of comp compulsory things we have to do when it comes to COVID? But then when you 
then you privately don't do it, which then is going to harm public confidence in you and it's going to make people not want to abide by your rules and your new... I just don't get it. I really don't. Oh, I, to... I, I really, really don't get it. Honestly, really, really, really don't get it, man. It's just one of the most confusing parts of modern day life that I've kind of never really got around to kind of figuring out. I honestly don't know. I really, really, really don't know, man. I saw my life, I really don't know. But hey... What can you do? We move on. Um, we could quickly comment on this. Let's skip ahead on that one. Let's go here. Let's talk about yes. Yeah, so um, where's 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 there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, so obviously new rules have been put into place here in the UK concerning COVID. Um, we, we're now in a Plan B. I guess they got rid of the tiered system, whatever crap, and now we've got this new Plan A B C thing going forward. Just like all right, whatever, cool. So this is courtesy of BBC. COVID-19 face masks required to more indoor venues in England. Of course, I'm going to concentrate more on the venues, nightclubs sort of things because that's what I'm mainly interested in when it comes to living my best life. But it continues here, it says here, um, face coverings are now compulsory in most indoor venues in England under measures to tackle Omicron variant. The new rules require people to wear masks in locations including theatres, cinemas, places of worship, museums and indoor sports stadiums. Further changes start next week under the government's plan to the so-called Plan B COVID restrictions, but businesses have expressed concern about the impact of COVID passes, work from home. Oh, and work from home guidances. Minister Small Business Peter Sc or Paul Scully said the new restrictions were undoubtedly difficult for businesses trying to get the balance right by not shutting down the economy and instead bringing in the proportionate measures. He added that the recovery loans and the grants are still available for businesses struggling. Labour has said it will still back the plans allowing them to pass in the Commons. However, Shadow Health Secretary Wes Stating, no, West Streeting said that there were other measures the government should be including um administering 500,000 booster jabs a day improving ventilation to scores and increasing statutory sick pay those are all good measures but you know they're not going to do that it's going to go for the tried and true lockdown 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 and then hope things go away and it's just a standard fucking nonsense protocol again and again and again we just don't seem to learn i just don't understand this and then moving on going for the new pub and club rules scroll down or just here was the pub changes and um, it says under the new government plans for plan b masks are now required in most public indoor venues right so this is this again is the lunacy of these flipping um mandates or these restrictions when they come into place it just don't make no sense so this is regarding pubs however there were some exceptions as the guidelines say that face masks are not mandatory in venues where people visit to eat drink or exercise so you have to wear them in other venues indoors, but not in other venues. There's no real stipulation about, you know, ventilation systems in some places. Nah, it's just all about what venue it is. So for some reason, they think you can't get COVID in a pub, but you can get COVID in a supermarket. Like, make it make sense. Um, then that means that you don't need to wear a mask um, in a pub or at a restaurant. Again, make it make sense. Um, so you have to wear it on the public transport on the way there. But once you get inside the actual venue, you don't need to wear it. Cool. Um, it's not clear whether you have to wear a mask when moving around a moving around a pub, such as popping into a toilet. But you may be advised to wear one when not be seated. You could also not needed to show your vaccine passport when visiting a pub restaurant. So you don't need to show a vaccine passport when visiting a pub or restaurant, but you do need to show a vaccine passport when going to a nightclub. Make that make sense again, because I guess there are some nightclubs that exist that are technically a pub or a restaurant. I guess right, because sometimes in the day they might have food. Or sometimes, I guess maybe if you have food to a certain extent or you have tables. I don't know how it works out, but I'm sure there are some nightclubs that are kind of deemed pubs more so than clubs because of the capacity they have. Maybe. I don't know. But again, stu stupid, stupid, stupidness. It says here for the clubs. Under Plan B, it says it's a different story. When it comes to nightclubs, as vaccine passports will become an entry requirement from the 15th of December. Under Plan B rules, people will need an NHS COVID pass to show their vaccination status or proof of a negative test to gain entry to the following places. Nightclubs, indoor seat venues with more than 500 people, um, unseated outdoor venues with more than 4,000 people, and any venue with 10,000 people. Again, doesn't make sense. A single vaccination won't be enough to get an entry. Only two doses of COVID vaccine will suffice. The government also encouraging people to make uh, take lateral flow tests or ahead of visiting a high risk situation where you might come into contact with people you don't really come in contact with or when visiting a vulnerable person. So it's mandatory to go in to a nightclub with a COVID pass, but if you want an extra layer of security, take a lateral flow test. 
So essentially they're saying you can't go to a nightclub unless you get a COVID vaccination, which I guess is going to hamper a lot of people because I'm sure there are a lot of people in club land who are very against the idea of having a COVID pass, who are very against the idea of getting vaccinated, just haven't got around to it. And I just don't know. I think if you've been able to club this entire time without a vaccine passport and you figured it out, you're probably not going to run to get a vaccine now just so you can carry on bravely. You're just going to be like, you know what? I had my time. That was good. I'll just do something else. You're probably not going to run. I don't think this is any incentive to make people get vaccinated. I really don't. Because if anything, people are going to be like, you know what? Either I move on to other things or they're just going to weigh it out until restrictions get lifted and it just goes back to how it was quote unquote normal before. We just take a lateral flow test, which is essentially nothing. You could basically run a lateral flow test swab under a tap, probably, or put it in some tea, and you probably get a negative result. I mean, it's nothing really to, in regards. If you just if you think about it, really, really, really true, it, it really is nothing because there's a lot of people who are still going out, you know, knowing they're positive, but they're going out and saying fuck it. And there are people that are going out after they just they just kind of recovered from COVID straight away and just saying fuck it. So to suggest that COVID vax or lateral flow tests are doing anything to really stem the tide of you know, this uh, crazy virus is really naive, in my opinion. Um, it continues here, it says, it's not clear whether you must wear a face mask in a nightclub, <laughs> but similar to the rules in pubs and restaurants, you don't need to, if it's seating, or eating or drinking. Government guidelines do say, uh, do not say that wearing a mask in community centres, youth centres or members clubs and social clubs, as well as the attractions and entertainment venues, such as the museums, theatres, bingo halls and bowling alleys. While nightclubs are not explicitly mentioned in the guidelines, they could well follow these same rules. You could contact, so you can contact your venue if you're planning a visit ahead of time to confirm their guidelines. Yeah, good luck trying to call a nightclub and get an answer. Good luck also trying to get a nightclub and get an answer and figure out what they're going to do because they're probably as confused as we are. So it's all just a complete nightmare of a situation. But again, we shouldn't be surprised, innit? We really shouldn't. We just seem to kind of just fall into these issues again and again and again. Nothing seemed to really make sense. We seem to be running from one mistake to another, next mistake to the next. Blah, 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 blah. What can you do? Um, next one, talk about quickly here. This is something obviously that's been covered a lot recently and I kind of missed out on it because obviously I haven't been recording so often, but this is news courtesy of Dazed, right? That recently Berlin has implemented a ban on dancing, which has also led to essentially loads of clubs closing, which I'm going to mention later on. But um, yeah, man, that Berlin winter or that berlin new year that i was planning is completely been thrown in the bin based on this headline from days berlin has banned dancing in clubs standing to burger and anyone so as i mentioned previously i think in other podcasts i was meant to go to berlin um this weekend actually to go to Berghain. i think solomon and somebody else was playing on a friday and then i forgot who else was going to be playing on a saturday don't quiz me what was my lineup i was gonna go oh let me quit on with this show but december bomb bomb they've all been cancelled obviously if i go in the temp yeah so on the 10th it was going to be so um solomon on finest fridays alongside tiajana t and panorama bar which i thought would be an amazing time to go see that for a little bit and then of course the main event on the 17th so on the 10th was going to be 17 years of Berghain, right birthday weekend coming up it was meant to be playing in the main room at Berghain, colin bender's live ben clock um edith sorry edith many how do you pronounce that is it f domain um helena half imagine seeing her in Berghain. i have the activist jess again who i saw here in london he won she was really great natty series who i saw last time i went to Berghain a few weeks ago um rolando terence fixima again absolute legend and then at panorama bar there's going to be um Agenia, who i've seen on whore and another platform dj live streaming really cool um alinka Alinka, linka sorry playing chris williams ryan elliott soft crash and steffi back to back with a you know classic um panorama bar vibes and then in sal bar is going to be tobias playing live so that was going to be the time that was going to go right it's going to be flipping amazing i was really looking forward to it and then i also had a plan um i also had a trip planned on new year's day for the club sylvester which is usually their new Year's Day celebration that usually runs three days it's kind of like crazy weekend up to i think a wednesday or whatnot and i had my whole thing planned out booked holiday but luckily I didn't book the flights or the accommodation ahead of time. And I think that's one of the benefits of COVID traveling because everywhere, because the world isn't as open as it obviously was post pre pandemic. Most flights I've basically seen even last minute aren't that crazy, especially flights to Europe. Yes. You might have to pay a hundred pound, 200 pound more if you book the week of, or the week or the week prior, 
right, or two weeks prior to it, but it's still within some sort of reason. So what I've been doing, because of obviously the changes um, to the rules and restrictions have changed all the time, and obviously because we're not in the EU anymore, the UK, there's an extra, extra layer, um, there's an extra layer of kind of trickiness to kind of get around. I've kind of been protecting myself and be like, you know what, these budget airlines anyway don't like giving refunds they refuse to even if you put protection on it so i'd much rather just protect myself be like try and book as last minute as i can and then go that way and obviously have some savings so i can use that for accommodation spending money but just do it that way and luckily that plan did work because at the time that i was just about considering to book my airbnb get my flight sorted out boom suddenly i'm hearing rumors or rumblings that the clubs are going to close i think that's what i heard prior to like the last weekend which was um at Bergheim, which was which was yeah the one that just happened so that was on on saturday the, the 4th of december right oh yeah no friday the 3rd of december until the 4th or in the 4th and the 5th or whatever right that weekend with d dan rubenstein blah, blah, blah. a lot of people were saying yeah this might be the last weekend of raving and i was like oh shit so i just kind of kept my eye to the ground i kept my ear to the ground sorry and then of course news came out that they were going to and dancing and then i eventually led to club saying hey there's no point of us staying open they've already got one restriction in terms of 50 percent capacity then they've got a ban on dancing it just doesn't make it viable for a place like berkheim or for most clubs i'd assume in that regard but i guess in some ways the berlin um kind of government thought it was a great way to kind of make sure clubs still get money in through the tills by keeping them open but then just banning the dancing which is weird but i guess it kind of goes back to what they did prior when they had all the spaces open in terms of open air but you weren't allowed to dance that was a kind of weird thing. They says the following, as of Wednesday, December the 6th, Berliners will no longer be allowed to dance inside the nightclubs. In a bid to minimise the transmission of COVID amid the spread of the Omicron variant, the Senate of Berlin is enforcing a ban on dancing inside the nightclubs and imposing a strict maximum limit on large events. TBH, it's hard to picture clubbers swaying gently to Marcel Beatman um, banging out techno. Of course, meant to be a joke, but it's not funny. As well as making cutting shapes um, verb sorry, verboten, clubbers have also been advised to limit contact with other people. The 2G rule also applies everywhere in nightlife in Berlin, referring to Germans' large-scale events nightlife guidelines, which require patrons to hold on to 2Gs, um, either Gimpfet or whatever, vaccinated or Gensin having had a positive test in the last six months. Now, one thing I can say about Berlin, even though they have a very low um, vaccine adoption adherence whatever rate i think it's in the 60s or something like that's really low one thing i have to do i have to say i saw more people wearing face masks and generally being cognitive or aware of their surroundings and trying to not hang around places too long than i did i've ever seen them in my entire life in london even during the peak of the pandemic um because i felt like whenever people go outside in london they just did what they wanted to do when they're at home i guess you couldn't you know when you couldn't go outside you couldn't do it but for the most part i didn't really see any people's change in real behaviors the people that went to wear masks were wore them but i didn't see nothing being enforced i didn't see people getting turned away in shops i didn't see any social shaming until not being wearing a mask it's, there was none of that but in berlin you definitely feel it when you go on public transport and you haven't got your mask on you forget it you feel people kind of looking at you you feel a little bit you know again a bit of social shame a bit of social pressure um people are generally just kind of you know aware of their surroundings more it's just more of a you kind of feel like you're living in a pandemic more so over there than you do here. Here, you just feel like people just conveniently try to kind of put it to the back of their mind because they don't want to remember, they don't want to listen, they don't want to care, they want to live their lives. But over there, for sure, people are a little bit more aware of it. But again, hasn't helped things either. I'm sure vaccinations are not helping, but all that adherence, um, all that compliance hasn't done nothing. They're still in a worse position than we are. They're having to close or having to ban dancing. And, you know, again, one of the most um, important in cities in Europe, they're not allowed to dance. Um, all these things they're being punished with despite them really taking COVID seriously, which is, again, um, something that we need to kind of highlight. It says here, the news comes after Germany's federal government said that all nightclubs and states in high infection rates must close as a ban is legally, sorry, it's only legally enforceable from next week. Clubs will be allowed to open at the weekend at 50% capacity, which again, I've said before, was a previous night that happened um, on the 3rd and off there in Panama by Bergen. It says here, um, 20 months of pandemic and no better idea than to ban dancing, said Club Commissioners Berlin um, Lutz Lane uh, Lisch Singer. Lis, how do you say that? Lysenring. 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 And um, we continue to hear that it doesn't take much um, imagination to figure out that you can't enforce a dance ban in the party basements and private homes without 2G and without tests. No word about PCR tests, no data on level of infections assigned to clubs that justifies some massive restrictions, which is true. It's always been the case, though, isn't it? Whatever city, most metropolitan cities, London included too, 
whenever it comes to dealing with COVID, for whatever reason, the nightlife and hospitality industry just gets hit up in the head. For some reason, people just, and all my guess, assume those places are the ones that have the highest amount of infection rates when there's been no evidence to support that. If anything, there's evidence is, is in the contrary because most of these places, in order to kind of run a business and to make sure people want to return, you're going to want to comply, you're going to want to install ventilation systems, whatever needs to be done to make sure that you're able to kind of keep your kitchen and your tills and your bars open, that doesn't necessarily make sense. And just in general, it's just a tired approach that clearly isn't working. You want to try something else? No, we don't. The clubs are the first to close and the last to open all the time. Same, same thing. <clears throat> there we got a post here from some guy on Twitter says clubs are open, but dancing is forbidden. I guess because the vibes are what was most infectious. Again, another attempt at a joke. Another person here says Berlin announced that clubs can stay open, but dancing is cancelled. Dark wave stays winning, baby. Cool. And then of course the news that crushed my heart completely was the announcement that Berkheim says on the occasion of the current pandemic situations and the best health interests of everyone, events at Berkheim Paran Bar are being discontinued until further notice. Of course, mostly to do with the ban on, on dancing. I don't think the 50% rule really applied. I think they were doing some very clever sort of, you know, finessing in terms of saying, hey, with 50% capacity in Berkheim, 50% capacity in Panorama Bar. So that equals 100, right? That kind of thing. Or maybe, you know, divvying up around between Seoul, the other place, whatever. I don't know. I'm sure I did some, some finagling because from the reports I heard, no one really said it was, it felt half empty. If anything, people were saying it was still mad for that previous weekend. Obviously, it kind of, I, I guess, slowed down after a while because I'm sure there are a lot of clubbers out there who also feel a little bit panicked whenever the government says, hey, we're going to close this, we're going to ban this. It makes people think, hey, I probably shouldn't be outside and whatnot. But it didn't really change what they were doing, really, in the grand scheme of things, if you think about it was kind of the same as usual business as usual but again no surprise really that we're in the position that we're in now um same old same old um i'm just praying for different outcomes or no i'm just playing for different resolutions for this issue that we're currently facing clearly there's an issue with covid clearly um whether the whether the um, whether the kind of um results of it are you no know, clearly there's an issue with covid right clearly people are getting sick people are dying but maybe the severity of it is greatly exaggerated. And then maybe our approach to it is just a little bit antiquated, right? Maybe we need to think of something interesting, something new, something innovative, something out of the box to kind of deal with this issue. Or we need to come to a resolution or we need to come to a realization that we have to live with this. And if we're going to live with this, let's just live with it. Let's not just keep going back and forth with this lot. That just doesn't work. It really doesn't. If anything, what it does, it just kind of pits people against each other Vax, anti-vax, lockdown, pro-lockdown, anti-lockdown. Um, it doesn't convince anybody to join your side. I've rarely, if ever, seen anyone who was pro-lockdown go to be anti-lockdown and vice versa. Um, it does nothing for public confidence. It does nothing for the economy. It does nothing for people's just protect, nothing for their mental health, um, nothing to help families, I'm sure, like you know, small kids and stuff in a tiny apartment having to do homeschool and all these nightmare situations like what are people doing let alone the people who move to those cities with the dreams of pursuing a career in whatever arts whatnot then the complete industry is completely shut down you're unable to do those kind of things and then you're told to what learn another skill no i want to do this thing i want to promote i want to be a musician whatever now now suddenly i've got to change tact and discover flipping wood making and trying to become a carpenter like what the hell is this like it makes no sense and it doesn't seem to be any other way out of this apart from what they want you to do. And again, still, the things they want you to do clearly aren't working because if they, I feel as if they think to themselves, if everyone gets vaccinated, this, this virus goes away. It isn't though. That's why we have other things in place, like the social distancing, like the mask mandates, like, you know, cleaning of certain, you know, public areas, whatever it may be. All these things are in place because we still know if you're vaccinated, you still get the virus. And if you're vax and also we still know that it doesn't matter if everyone gets vaccinated, the virus still spreads because it mutates. Clearly, that's why we've got all these different flipping mutations and variants all over the place. If that's the case, let's think of something else. Or let's just accept our position that we're in and just learn to live with it. But I don't know. Like it seems as if they, they think they can save everyone when they obviously can't, because some people have got, you know, uh, pre existing health conditions that are always going to make them susceptible to viruses in that regard. It's just a really weird situation to be in. It really is. Two years on, nearly three, and we're still doing the same shit. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't get it. I really don't. It's just maddening, man. Mad and again, the whole clubbing thing, I understand in some respect, call, cool, do what you have to do. If you got, you know, if you have to interest in if you just have to mandate vaccine passports, I don't that's a necessary evil. It is what it is. I'm just pissed off when they have to be closed. Again, my heart and 
you know, feelings go out to everybody out there in Berlin who's just started to get, you know, get a career started again, just started to re restart their career again in nightlife, um, you know, get taking some bookings, be able to work in some bars, do the door picking at some venues, and then suddenly, boom, they pull the rug on a few from your feet just before Christmas. It must be super miserable for sure in a city like that where essentially the entire point of being there is to go out to the clubs and shit. So when that gets taken away, a huge part of the city's identity and soul um, is completely eradicated and stripped away. So for sure, it's a stressful situation to be in. But again, necessary evil, vaccine passports, but then the limiting of capacity. Like, just close us. If you're going to take away our capacity, just close us. There's no point of having clubs open half halfway through and it's all, halfway full. And there's no point also having clubs open with flipping, um, what you call it? No dancing rules included. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just like, what are we doing here? But again, what are we doing here? As Brendan Short would say. But yeah, it is what it is. And a situation we're in, um, hopefully it gets reconciled very soon. If it doesn't, you're just going to go around in circles as per usual. And no one's going to be none the wiser because... We are who we say we are. Anyway, that's your Zing Show episode number 525. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. It's been fun. It's been cool. It's been nice. It's been jovial. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a 54321 star review. I'd be greatly appreciative of it. I'm going to play a song here at the end for my podcast listeners. If you're listening, of course, you'll hear a song. So enjoy that. If you're watching, if you want to hear a song, we'll just end abruptly. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you. I'll see you guys very soon. Next one will be no COVID talk. Will be mostly about fashion and other stuff going on. I'll talk about that Kanye and Drake concert, that good stuff. So if you didn't enjoy this one, please skip ahead to the next one because that will be more culturally more in, interesting things apart from talking about COVID because that stuff can get. But yeah, I just thought I'd talk about it because restriction in place. I didn't want to kind of you know waste your time in that regard. But yeah, thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Until then, take care, my friends. Peace.